بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم hello السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته my name is Amir Al Adam bin Hassan Al Azan and today our group will present to you uh, about the trade finance letter of credit and murabaha trade financing and this is the list of our presenter so first we will go to the introduction in this introduction we will be giving you the definition of the letter of credit the use of the letter of credit and the murabaha in trade financing so first we will go to the definition definition of the letter of credit of credit where the meaning of the letter of credit is an arrangement however name or described whereby a bank the issuing bank acting at the request or an instruction of the customer where we call the applicant or the bank act on its own behalf next we will go to the use of the letter of the credit first the letter of the credit is used to make payment or to the order of a third party the beneficiary or to accept and pay bill of exchange yes or the draft that have been drawn by the beneficiary second is to authorizes another bank to affect such payment or to accept and pay such bill of exchange or we call draft third to authorizes another bank to negotiate against stipulated document provided that the terms and conditions of the credit are complied with and fourth to authorizes another bank to accept a deferred payment undertaking next we will go to murabaha in trade financing as we all know murabaha means markup and murabaha has been the safest method used in trade finance in islamic banking this is because the cost of microfinance facility is measured in a way that is easily understandable to the beneficiary in this context most of microfinance institution use markup method or interest rate which is similar to marawaha next the second many microfinance institution use a short term of marawaha markup in financing working capital such as in purchase of inputs or raw material however they impose restriction on its application to purely commercial transaction such as buying goods or resale this is because all of the transaction is been uh, controlled by the BNM and SSC which is SSC work under the BNM and last but not least Morobaha is a suitable financial product which can be adapted to fulfill the needs of the typical microfinance client to go for purely micro commercial transaction next we will go to the background of islamic trade finance so in this part i will be explaining to you about islamic trade finance in malaysia so in malaysia there are about 16 islamic bank locally and foreign that offer islamic trade finance facilities however as itf product and facilities are various not all bank offer all the facilities some of them will only have certain facilities especially the most commonly used in basic trading transaction but there are a significant potential for it to grow in supporting the sustainable productive economic activity this is because the performance of ITF in Malaysia makes up a total of 3.5% which is equivalent to RM 50.3 billion of total rate but despite the percentage held by ITF in the number of total trades is relatively small however the provision of trade finance shows that ITF in Malaysia has the potential to grow along with the Islamic finance industry okay so we go to the trade finance products trade working capital financing I which is TWCFI is one of the products offered by Islamic banks in Malaysia and working capital finance is business finance designed to boost the working capital available to a business. It is often used for specific growth projects such as taking on a bigger contract or investing in a new market. Uh, okay, a trade working capital is the difference between current assets and current liabilities directly associated with everyday business operations. 
According to Bank Islam Malaysia Berhad, the Trade Working Capital Financing I product is divided into three, which are first TWCFI, uh, which is letter of credit, a loan facility used to finance domestic or international commerce in exchange for a letter of credit I issued by the bank. Okay, second. Uh, TWCFI uh, purchase a facility for financing domestic or international commerce against inward bills for co collection I or on an open account basis. Okay, third, TWCFI sales a financing facility used to fund local or international trade sales uh, or export operations against outward bills for collection I or on an open account basis too. Okay, next slide. The TWCFI is different from the conventional ones and this is some of the product benefits. Okay, first, it allows you to fulfill your payment obligations to the seller, receive instant recovery for advance product for provided to the su supplier and even receive immediate cash for credit terms purchases. Okay, after that, uh, because of the fixed uh, second, which is second, because of the fixed rate financing char characteristic, it enables simple, simple cash flow management of a firm. And the third benefit is the payment amount will not be influenced by uh, fluctu fluctuations in the base financing. Okay, and the benefit number four is it provides up to 100% financing of invoice value. The World Bank Islamic Trade Finance stated that the opportunity for Malaysia, a formulation study emphasizes the significant role that the ITF can play in facilitating commerce, fostering prosperity, and accelerating post pandemic recovery. Enhancing ITF can help other OIC member nations as well as the worldwide Islamic finance industry, in which Malaysia is a well established leader in addition to the home economy. Next, let's have a look to the concept of letter of credit. So, a letter of credit is also known as a credit letter. It's an assurance from a bank that a buyer's payment to a seller will be paid on time in the exact amount. So, by using the letter of credit, the seller receives assurance that he will be paid for the item that he exports to his client. Besides, in order for the bank to pay the seller, the seller must provide the bank with the required site shipping documentation proving the delivery of the products ordered within the specific limit time. Next, we go to the issues pertaining to the letter of credit in trade finance. So firstly, international trading is full of fraud concern as a result of geographical disparities. So domestic trade does not pose as much of a risk of fraud as foreign exchange. So furthermore, Criminal firms frequently disappear before they can be lawful traced down. So because bank typically only deal with document and not with the good services and performance of the organization. So this component frequently become the most significant source of fraud risk. Secondly, letter of credit in trade finance also bring the fraud risk for the applicant. So in this scenario, the importer in a business letter of credit is considered as the applicant. So the applicants are exposed to the risk for a variety of reasons including shipments, issuing bank flaws and fraud related hazard. Lastly, letter of credit in trade finance also bring non-payment item risk to the beneficiary. So beneficiary refers to the party to whom a credit has been established in the case of letter of credit. So not suitable document risk Fraud related risk and also non payment risk are only a few of the top variables posing a threat to the recipient. So, actually, there are a lot of risks in this letter of credit, but this three is only a few of the risks uh, issuing by letter of credit. Next is legal risk, which that a corporate organization confronts when it comes to legal issues. It's a form of financial risk. Non-compliance with the government's laws, rules and regulations as well as other statutory organizations that regulate enterprises is the most common cause of this form of risk. Business contracts and agreements, assets and related litigation, issues with intellectual property rights, patents, 
copyright breaches and other issues can all result in legal danger. Since the Murabaha contract involves debt creation and the acquisition of fixed assets, banks suffer a liquidity risk in addition to these legal issues. And this might lead to a cash shortage and, as a result, a longer operational cycle. In Saudi Arabia, the banking system has been framed according to Sharia law and there are certain areas where, uh, where the system fails to follow the Sharia law, even the basic law of the kingdom, in order to ensure a level playing field for Islamic banks. Next is foreign exchange rate which means the price of a native currency defined in terms of another currency is known as a foreign exchange rate. In other terms, a foreign exchange rate compares the value of one currency to that of another. It is one of the most essential critical aspects that supports global commerce development. The problem is linked to exchange rate fluctuations in this scenario. It is because the Islamic Trade Finance ITF, is a worldwide transaction involving many nations. It is more vulnerable to exchange rate fluctuations. They stated that when Islamic banks finance international commerce, they are dealing with many currencies and are thus more vulnerable to this risk as well as swings in the foreign exchange rate. According to Trade Finance Global TFG, it says that it affects exchange rate fluctuations that can affect all sizes of business and contracts. Other than that, all international trade investments are dominated in US dollars and this condition raises the potential of market volatility lowering the value of payments. As a result, exchange rate changes seriously affect the profitability of business that operate on a worldwide basis. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Next, we go to Sharia issues regarding to Murabaha in Islamic trade finance product. Firstly, sell contract between the importer and the exporter. The issue arises when the customer applies for the letter of credit Murabaha from the issuing bank once he has already signed a sale contract with the exporter, meaning that he become the owner of the goods. Therefore, if the issuing bank agrees to issue letter of credit Murabaha to the customer, bank will be the owner of the goods and the customer will be appointed as the purchasing agent for the bank. In this situation, the issuing bank that issues letter of credit Murabaha can be considered as entering into an existing contract of sale between the customer and the exporter, which is forbidden in Sharia. Next point is charging fees on the issuance of letter of credit Murabaha. The issues arise when the uh, majority of Islamic banks in Malaysia charge a fees for the insurance of letter of credit Murabaha. Their reason is the claiming that their service in issuing letter of credit Murabaha to affect payment to the exporter through the negotiation bank should be awarded by the customer and it is embedded into the selling price of Murabaha contract. It has to be remembered that in letter of credit Murabaha, the bank appointed to the customer to be purchasing agent without any payment to, to the customer. Okay, uh, the third point is use of interest rate as benchmark. The Islamic banks in Malaysia which offer financing by, by the way of Murabaha determine their profit or markup on the basis of the current interest rate. The most important requirement for the validity of Murabaha is that it is genuine sell uh, all its conditions and necessary consensuses. If a Murabaha transaction fulfills all its requirement, uh, Merely using uh, the interest rate as a benchmark for determining the profit of Murabaha does not render the transaction as invalid, uh, pro prohibited because the deal itself does not uh, contain interest. Okay, next, uh, the last point for the Sharia issues is promise to the purchase. In contemporary practice, 
the Islamic banks will ask the customer to sign a promise to purchase the goods when it is acquired by the financer. It is a an unilateral promise from the customer which binds himself and not the financier. This leads to the question of whether a side, one-sided promise is enforceable in Sharia. Muslim jurists have different views on the subject. Okay, next we go to 4.4 which is financial crisis. Firstly, the financial markets has been driven by greed that has torn down the world's, the world's uh, financial system. Speculation has reached intolerable levels. The intense competition and shareholders' demand for higher returns have encouraged excessive risk-taking and led banks to extend their credit to unworthy borrowers who normally do not qualify for loans under prime lending criteria. In many cases, loans were approved without uh, proper evaluation of loan applications for the credibility of the uh, applicants. Okay, next point is uh, they argues that the existence of subprime borrowers were also a major cause of financial uh, crisis. Subprime borrowers are characterized by default on mortgage obligations, uh, previous credit, low income, health, uh, hence inability to repay uh, substantial mortgage and insufficient coverage of health insurance. Moralists have questioned the finance rationality of high returns concept which justified charging high interest rate to low income sub, uh, low, uh, low income. Okay, and then uh, lastly, sub prime borrowers and low rate to high income rich credit uh, worth borrowers. Okay, I think that's all. Thank you. Okay, so for the conclusion, Murabaha is also frequently used in short-term trading such as uh, granting letters for credit to import importers. Uh, a Murabaha letter of credit is issued on an applicant's behalf the importer. The bank that issued the letter of credit promises to pay a sum of money in accordance uh, with the provisions of the letter of credit. But uh, the goal of Murabaha is to fund a transaction without requiring interest payments, which, which are considered riba by most Muslims, especially most scholars, and so it's harab and also forbidden. Murabaha has become the most common or default Islamic finance. Okay, so that's all from us. Thank you for lending your ears, uh, for hearing out our presentation. And Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Okay, so that's all from us. Thank you for lending your ears, uh, for hearing out our presentation. And Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh.